there is real evil. In the darkest shadows and in the most ordinary places. These are the true stories of the innocent and the unimaginable. When Marcy Wyckoff senses an unnatural presence in her house, her husband Randy attributes her fears to stress. But over time, the fear grows, and Marcy feels like a prisoner in her own home. Randy watches helplessly as an unknown invader tortures his wife. But he can't fight what he can't see. Between the world we see and the things we fear, there are doors. When they are opened, nightmares become reality. The heartland of North America is filled with illusions of eternity. Vast open spaces, endless skies, and roads that seem to go on forever. But for some, thoughts of eternity are terrifying, and the open road is a road to nowhere. Is it true, Frank? Is it? This guy uh, came around the corner, lost control, and struck that tree right there. How bad is he hurt? He's conscious, but uh, the real question is whether or not he sustained any type of massive trauma. It's not a good way to start your morning. I can't believe I didn't hear anything. Well, she says I sleep like the dead, but I don't know, I should have heard something. Let's see what it is. Ma'am, I need you to calm down. Can you give me that address? Where are you? In the winter of 2003, right, Marcy Wyckoff manages a police dispatch center in Bloomington, Illinois. Adam 38, Adam 44, family disturbance involving children in progress at 1234 West Washington. White male, intoxicated and dangerous. Rough day. Just Her husband, Randy, is a detective in the same department. With both of us working in law enforcement, it doubles the stress. I worry about him. Now, I'm in a safe environment inside the building. He's not. He's out there on the street. How come you're feeling calls? <sighs> Judy's out sick. We needed an extra person on the phones. As long as we've been together, she's never worked a 40-hour week. It's always 48, 50, 55, 60 hours. I just worry about her stress levels. Hey, did you hear anything more about the accident? Yeah, I talked to Larry in County an hour ago. And? The guy didn't make it. Apparently there's some complications, some unexpected. I was surprised and saddened because I didn't think his injuries were that extreme. Something we could have done. I know. We felt horrible, terrible. There was a guy that died in your front yard. For eight years, the couple's country home has provided an escape from their stressful jobs. I loved coming home after work. It was just so nice to come out here. It was so quiet. You didn't hear the traffic. You didn't hear the, any sirens. It was great. But there is one sound the couple misses, the laughter of their son, Clint. 
He recently joined the Army National Guard and was deployed to the Middle East. The day that he left, the phone quit ringing, nobody came over, and it was just like deserted. There was no one here. It, it almost felt like you know, we'd had a funeral and he was gone. In his absence, Marcy and Randy depend on each other more than ever. Randy and me have gotten along great from day one. He's always been my best friend. Oh, look, those guys have got it made. <laughs> Mercenaries, hangings, plagues. What more can you want? I meant the actors, not the characters. Nice to deal with fictional crisis for a change instead of real ones. Mm-mm. That's all I want. I have always told Randall, if there's anything I ever want to do in my life before I die, I want to ride a horse in a western. I just think that would be the coolest thing. Let me go check that. Uh, when you own a home, it's always something. Come finish the movie. We'll fix it later. And I thought, you know, great. There's one more thing that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, yeah. During the week, Randy frequently works the graveyard shift. Marcy is usually asleep before he gets home. Randy, is that you? Absolutely no one there. I kind of just let it go. All right, this is my imagination. I am a level-headed person. I think things through. I don't make snap knee-jerk decisions. And that comes from the line of work that I'm in. I felt like I was being watched all the time. You cannot explain and put your finger on it, but it's like somebody breathing down the back of your neck. As winter breaks, Marcy's stress at work and home only grows, as does her concern for her son's safety. It's been almost three weeks. 
Months before, I was telling him what time he had to be home at night, and now he's out defending our country with a gun. You know he'll call the right when he can. Here, should cheer you up. Start shooting in a few weeks. It's only 20 minutes from here. You know he wouldn't want you to worry like this. It was the scariest thing for me to ever go through every day. I would say a little prayer for that kid every day. was gone just like that. There's nobody here. Are you sure you saw something? Yes. I saw somebody standing right in front of me. A split second later, he was gone. Gone where? I don't know. I didn't see him leave. I just saw him standing in the doorway. The thing about Marcy is she's very grounded. She's not taken towards big imaginative things. She's uh, very here and now. What did he look like? He was tall, older. Uh, I think he was wearing jeans. Yeah, I want to believe you, but I don't have anything tangible that supports what you're telling me. Well, he's gone now, whoever it was. I knew deep down that there was something in here. Well, I knew it. Left with no other explanation, Marcy considers the impossible. Perhaps her house is haunted. You read about it, you see it on TV shows, you see movies about it. Can this really be happening? Can this be? In the spring of 2003, Randy gets promoted to sergeant and starts working even longer hours than before. Marcy is nervous about being home alone. I'd stay at work. I'd stay sometimes 8, 9 o'clock at night. That was not uncommon. That way I figure, okay, I go home. I'm only going to be home by myself for a couple of hours. Working late? Oh, just finishing up. Have you heard from Clint? He was in Kuwait two weeks ago, but we haven't heard from him in a while. No, Marcy knows that her co-worker's family once lived in her house, but she's afraid to ask if they ever experienced anything supernatural there. You're all right. You seem, seem tired. Yeah. I've just got a lot of things on my mind lately. Okay, well, see you tomorrow. It's just not in the course of normal, everyday conversation do you say, hey, guess what? But I think I got a ghost hanging around my house. Nobody believes that.
Hello? Hi, Mom. Clint, how are you? I'm good. You know, things are kind of crazy right now. What's new with you guys? Oh, other than working too hard, I, we're okay. I really miss you guys. Listen, I really can't talk right now. We're on the move again. I just wanted to call and let you know I'm doing okay. Will you tell Dad I called? Of course. I really love you guys. We love you too. So much. Bye, Mom. Bye. <laughs> uh, once I feel this air down the back of my neck, there's not a window open, the air conditioner's not on, nothing's running, no fans, nothing. Get out of here. And I said, I mean it. Go away, get out of this house. We don't want you here. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Marcy forces herself to carry on. On one hand, I'm terrified. On the other hand, this is my home, and you're not going to run me out of here. something was following me, if something was chasing me, I, I had no idea. Randy, something is in this house. Something touched me. Who touched you? I don't know. There's nobody here. I don't know what you tell your wife when she thinks there's an unknown presence in your house. I don't know what the correct response for that is. best I could do is be home in 15 minutes and I wouldn't be able to do anything once I got home. So it's just another level of frustration. Marcy, are you all right? I'm fine. Just get home as soon as you can, okay? Okay. I was scared. Is somebody watching everything that I'm doing? You can't even explain to someone how horrible that feeling is. while Randy races home. Marcy does everything she can think of to protect herself. I'm not going to that basement again. That's out of the question. But now what do you do? How do you fight something you can't see? If something's gonna come through the door, it's, I'm gonna, at least gonna hear it. find anything down there. I know what I felt. Okay, then tell me. I don't know what you're going through unless you talk to me. It was very frustrating for me because I can't explain to him how that felt. You had to be here to believe it. When I'm alone in this house, I feel as though someone is standing right next to me as close as I am to you right now. How can I help? I don't know. But I never doubted that she felt what she said she felt. But anything that I would say would just come off as empty. It was real frustrating for me because I'm used to fixing problems. Desperate to understand what's going on, 
Marcy must take a risk. Are you busy? No. Can you come in? Okay. What's up? I have sort of a strange question to ask you. Okay. Did anything weird ever happen to you in that house where you grew up? Like what? Lights turning on and off for no reason, or strange sounds you can't explain. <laughs> what are you, nuts? <laughs> You never experienced anything out of the ordinary? Mm, no, I lived there my entire life and nothing like that's ever happened. Huh. Ah, forget it. It's probably just electrical wiring or something. Sorry to bother you. When you talk to people about it, it's kind of like when you tell a joke or something and somebody looks at you and you get to the punchline and it's not funny to them. I felt like there's absolutely nobody else that's ever been through this. Nobody knows how I feel. And I didn't know what to do. The only time Marcy feels safe is when she's not alone. Several days passed with no word from the teenager. Police, friends, and neighbors organized a search of the area surrounding Micah's home. Desperate for a lead, police shut up a robot near one night. There's a blue mist right in front of my face. I am awake. I can see the TV in the background. What is this mist? What? What's wrong? What's wrong? It's in here now. It's gone now. But there was a blue light in here a few seconds ago. I wasn't dreaming. Why didn't you wake me up? It was gone too soon. No, I don't feel safe in there, not even with him. So nobody can protect me. You start questioning yourself day in and day out. You can drive yourself over the edge. I was just a basket case all the time. So I wanted somebody to tell me, it's OK. It's all right. I wasn't looking for a support group. I just wanted to know this happened to someone else. I start trying to find other people's stories. But there's vulnerability in reaching out for help. I'm not quite to the point where I want to have somebody come to my house. If I have them come to my house and they walk in here and say, there's nothing here, I'm, I am nuts. I have lost my mind.
I see the guy in the white t-shirt again, standing with two girls this time. He is just staring at me like, you can't touch me. You know, I'm here. I think he thought, oh, here we go again. Now she's seeing things. But he didn't say that. He tried very hard to be supportive. Randy knows it's important that Marcy get out of the house so she doesn't dwell on her growing fear. I was concerned that if this progression continued, that it could cause her some actual tangible health problems. See that camera over there? It's gotta be. And all these cars, we gotta get rid of these cars. Excuse me. How can I help you? I'm, I'm sorry, looking for the director or somebody who can tell me about being an extra in your production. Yeah, we need people right this way, sir. Thanks. Jim. Hold on a second. All right, move this trailer. Excuse me, can you talk to this fellow, please? Yeah. Good morning, I'm Sergeant Wyckoff. Hey, Jim Conover. Uh, nice to meet you. Um, I read in the paper that you were looking for extras, and my wife, it's always been her dream to be in a Western, and well, she could really use something like this about now. Here, it's a card from my assistant. You give her a call next week, she'll set something up for both of you, okay? Thanks, I really All appreciate right. it. Come on, let's go. You gotta move that camera right there. One night, while Marcy's at work, I wasn't alone. 
this is what Marcia has been talking about. I know what you mean now. I could tell something was there, even though I couldn't see it. Now we're on the same page. Now he understands. Now he's gonna help me. You think it has anything to do with that guy who was killed in the motorcycle accident? I mean, maybe it's him you've been seeing. But what about the two women in the basement? Who are they? The whole thing really was crazy. We were trying to put a name and a face to it, and we don't have a clue. Maybe we should think about moving. We always talked about going out west. We talked about retiring out west. I'm not ready for that. I don't think you are either. Well, what do you want me to do? Should I invite somebody to the house? Like who? Marcy and Randy get out of the house as often as possible. They volunteer as extras in the filming of a local movie. You must be the new extras. That's right. And it gave me something to do so I wasn't just worried about what was going to happen yes, that's next. Right. And you're both with the police department. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I used to be a private investigator for 14 years. How'd you get involved in this? I didn't. My brother did. He's the director. I'm just helping him out while he's filming. So what do you do now? I'm a full-time Paranormal investigator. Are you serious? 16 years. For us to find him at that time in that way, it just seemed extremely coincidental or, or lucky. So what does that mean exactly? I mean, what do you do? Basically, I talk to spirits. I know a lot of people don't believe in that kind of thing, but I try to help those that do. Rob Conover has intervened in hundreds of hauntings since discovering his clairvoyant Brothers, abilities. Do you have a few minutes? Yeah. I refer to myself as a reluctant astronaut because I didn't want it, but I got it. What would you say if I told you our house is haunted? I'd say we just met and I don't see any reason for you to lie to me. keep seeing a man in my house. Yeah, I sense the heaviness about you. And he goes, you definitely have got some issues going on in your house. You definitely have got some problems there. Which floored me. And how does he know this? When I see him, he's standing there looking at me, staring at me. Most people see spirits as they fade away. And I knew then that this was going to get worse, because it's obvious he's there to scare her. Which means the more he gets away with it, the more he's going to do. The most important thing to do is to control your fear. When a spirit comes into a house, it will play on one person. The fear of that person gives it energy. I always tell people that if they're scared, to pull out their Bible and recite the 23rd Psalm. My brother's asking for you. Okay. Here's my card. Give me a call if you need help. I don't push myself on people. When they call me, it's because they're ready. They're ready for me to be there. For weeks, Marcy has avoided being home alone. But she can't stay away forever. One night, while Randy is at work. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures.
Randy? I said, that is it. I am done. I'm through with you. You're leaving. Rob, uh, this is... This is Marcy Wyckoff. People think I'm going to show up dressed in black and have a briefcase full of gadgets. Basically, I show up with myself and my Bible. Rob, thanks so much for coming. Uh... I know it's kind of nasty out there. Yeah, the storm's gonna be here soon. But there's no preparation. I don't know how the spirit's gonna react to me. I go in and I deal with it the way I did all my life. One-on-one, -on -one, face to face, and not backing down. First thing I need to do is kind of walk around and see if I can locate the source of energy. I had no idea what to expect. Okay. I thought he'll come through the house, say a couple things, and that'll be the end of it. That's not quite what happened. There's definitely someone here. I felt the energy of the spirit, and it was very, very strong. He's hiding from me. Is he doing that? Yes. When we pass away, we maintain energy and electricity, and that electricity is what allows a, a spirit to get into light fixtures. The power goes out. That's when things started to happen. was beating so fast, and I was hoping that he knew what he was doing. There's definitely someone here. When I walk into an area and a spirit is present, before I see the spirit, I get a feeling. There's no pain. It's just a cool electrical shock all over. What are you doing here? Who are you? Stay calm, you've got to stay calm. But I could see the blue and the light, and I could see the outline of the figure. I was scared to death. He's here. Is it true, Frank? Is it? He's not alone. Get back to the car, now! 
I see spirits as they were when they passed away. Are you okay? I've seen people that were shot, stabbed, people that were in bad car wrecks. He's keeping them here. What? Two women, he's keeping them here. They obeyed everything that he told them. You stand here, you keep your head down. At one point, he actually told them, do not listen to what this man is saying. Where are they? Who are you? Talk to me. What the hell was that? There's no logical explanation. He's just trying to scare us. I wasn't afraid. That put him on the defensive even more. senses a tragedy that took place nearly 60 years ago. Is it true, Frank? Is it? Answer me. Is it? I swear to God, if you ever lay a hand on my daughter, I'll... You what? <laughs> this property. It was a motorcycle accident on the front lawn a few months ago. This was decades ago, before there were houses here. A man and two women were inside. They died on this land. It's not the house that's haunted, it's the land. Oftentimes when people die a sudden death, they stay right there where they've died. This man was afraid of going to hell. He created his own self-imposed purgatory by staying here. He made the female spirit stay because he was afraid of going through the light. Because of you, your fear, your vulnerability in times of stress feeds him, it makes him feel alive. Even in death, the male spirit has an unrelenting need to dominate. The reason the male spirit was uh, attracted to Marcy and, and scaring her so bad is because there was a lot, lot of time there that she was alone. And the fact that she reacted in a very fearful manner appealed to him. I literally thought, what on earth? What if now we can't get it out of here? What are we gonna do? The man's just gathering his strength. I'll have to talk to all three of them about crossing over. Make them understand that they don't belong here anymore. Rob first must convince the female spirits that they alone control their destiny. I'm here to help you. I know that you're afraid, but you are not alone. He may have had power over you in life, but he has no power over you in death. He can't hold you here any longer. He can't hold you here any longer.
male spirit's demeanor changed because suddenly he realized he was alone. You need to go too! not afraid of you anymore. He began to ask me questions. Will I be punished? Will it be painful? And I told him, I don't know. But it's up to you to face your judgment like we all will have to. I know that you're afraid of being judged for the things that you've done in life. But God's worst judgment is better than the devil's punishment. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you will accept this lost soul. Give him the courage, O oh Lord, to find his way into the light. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. I have helped three spirits go where they belong. Two where they should have been all along. And one who may be facing a judgment right now. I don't know what's on the inside of that light, but I know he's where he's supposed to be. And as soon as he goes through the light, our power pops back up. The side of the doorway where he went through the light was completely hot, and the other side of the doorway was cool. All this has gone away. My son, Clint. Nice to finally meet you. I know your parents are glad to have you home. It's good to be home, sir. Your mother's quite the brave woman. But now you've got to face the camera. <laughs> your scene's coming up. Thank you, Rob. I don't profess or even have an interest in the paranormal, but if somebody asks me, I can look them in the eye and say, yeah, we had a problem and we dealt with it. Now I know there's nothing wrong with me. I'm OK. If I can say one thing about it, this whole experience, it's trust your inner self, trust your own judgment. An experience like this, no one else understands unless you've been there. It's something we lived through and I'm glad it is over. The Wyckoffs continue to live in their house in Bloomington, but there have been no more supernatural occurrences. They are still investigating the deaths of the three strangers on their property. a fresh start in a new home. So this is it, huh? Yeah. I really appreciate you helping me move in. But soon realizes the house has other plans. Looks like they left in a hurry. There are signs that something is very wrong. Darkness and death surround me. A lot of the poems were about suicide. Evil is all around. They were almost like vampires. They were feeding on his misery. I'd never been so scared in my life. That was terror, real terror. Protect me from whatever's inside this house. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see, the things we fear. There are doors when they are opened. Nightmares become reality. In the winter of 2007, Al Gonzalez embarks on a new chapter in his life. So this is it, huh? Yeah. Your new place. Sure is big. Yeah. I know. I was going through a divorce and found a home that I really liked, a place that I thought I could really live in for years to come. It couldn't have come at a better time. Well, you needed a change. Things were getting rough there. 
My brother was going through some tough times. He got the home at a good price. I really appreciate you helping me move in. You got it. <laughs> After the divorce, my older brother, Mario, was very supportive of me and uh, always helpful, always willing to come up and spend time with me. Got the keys? Yeah, got the keys. When I first seen the house from the outside, it looked great. Come on. When you go inside the home, it seems like even during the day, there is a darkness. I mean, every hall, every room that you go in, you have to turn on a light. What is all this stuff? <laughs> Looks like they left in a hurry. What was really odd about the whole scenario is they left a lot of personal belongings behind that you would think that they would want to take with them. 500 bucks. I didn't ask any questions. The uh, previous owner said, if you're interested, we'll sell you everything in the house for $500. Couches, televisions, dishes in the cupboards, everything. I really didn't think it was strange. I thought it was a blessing because after the divorce, I literally had nothing. Over the next few weeks, Al tries to get used to living alone. It was a pretty rough time for me. I was so excited about having a new house, a new beginning, really. There was so much stuff in the house left by the previous owners that I found things constantly that I didn't even realize that they had left behind. One day when I was cleaning up, I found a manila envelope. And I thought it was gonna be like tax papers or something like that. And I was gonna throw it away, but my curiosity got the most of me. What? It was poems about various things in life. As I read more and more of them, they started to get darker. Man. A lot of the poems were about suicide, laying on the concrete floor, blood coming from their mouth. Laying on a concrete floor, wanting to get out, get away. But darkness, darkness and death surround me. Haunted by the ghosts. That mouth. That wide gaping mouth. That wide gaping mouth. Dripping in blood. I thought maybe it was written by somebody who had lived in the house. She described dark things happening in her life and she no longer wanted to live. I am gone. and it was obviously a tormented person. I started hearing footsteps down the hallway. You could hear the cracking of the floorboards, like somebody was walking down the hallway very heavy. I wasn't alone. Somebody was in the house. Didn't find anybody, didn't see anything. Found myself living in a dark house. And a house that had dark secrets, maybe. Now, Al chooses to ignore his suspicions and gets to work setting up his home office. 
My older brother had a business where we found subcontract work for the military. My job was to help find uh, appropriate people for appropriate jobs. When I was sitting there, I heard a noise in the uh, living room. movement out of the corner of my eye. It looked like, uh, like a shadow. After a difficult divorce, Al Gonzalez seeks a fresh start in a new home. But so far, the house has been anything but peaceful. I came face to face with something that was definitely not of my world. I started to tell myself that maybe ghosts do exist. Maybe the house is haunted. Al? One night, Al's brother Mario drops by to check on him. I was worried about him. I wanted to spend time with him because he was going through a lot of different things in his life at the time. The home was very depressing. I didn't like the feeling of the house at all. It was like walking in a funeral home with no one there, that type of feeling. Al? You immediately just don't want to be there. Hey. Hey. What's going on? Well, the place looks better all cleaned up, doesn't it? Yeah, sure, it looks good. Look what I found when I was cleaning up. Someone left them behind. They were very odd, depressing poems. Talk about killing themselves, weird stuff sounded to me like something that Edgar Allan Poe would write. Man, these are depressing. You should throw them out. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. Are you okay? You seem tired. I've been having a little trouble sleeping. No big deal. Hey. Have you ever? Ever what? Have you ever seen something that you can't explain? What do you mean? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I 
what I experienced. In the house, it was still something I was trying to hide, still something that I didn't necessarily feel comfortable telling other people. For the next few days, Al attempts to keep his mind occupied. I was in my office doing some work. But whatever is in the house continues to torment him. I heard as if somebody was taking their fist. Bang, 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 bang. So loud, so sudden, that it really made my heart race. It was coming from inside the house and the wall. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Please make these sounds stop. I was scared. And protect me from whatever's inside this house. I asked for it to go away. I prayed. But Al's prayers go unanswered. It didn't work. Religion didn't help. Prayer didn't help. In the spring of 2008, Al's life reaches an all-time low. In the midst of his mental exhaustion, he receives news that his father was murdered, the victim of a robbery gone wrong. My dad immigrated from Peru. Seven dollars in his wallet taught himself English and joined the military and made himself into a very good man. My brother was very close to my father. It was obviously very hard on my brother. He wouldn't answer the phone, he wouldn't talk to anybody. My brother started isolating himself. I wish that I could have done something for him at the time, but we lived so far apart. I heard my dad's voice call out my name. Dad? Al Gonzalez is convinced his house is haunted. For months, he has lived with the paranormal activity, but now the entity has taken it to the next level by mimicking the voice of his recently deceased father. Dad?
I saw this ghostly man. I'd never been so scared in my life. That was terror, real terror. <laughs> I really had no options. I had no money. I had nowhere else to go. I had to stay at the house. I was stuck. Desperate, Al contacts the Fort Wayne Shadow Chasers Parasisters, a team made up of three female paranormal investigators. He had a lot of things on his mind, um, negative, not happy things. He saw a few things in his house he was very frightened of or didn't understand. So talk to me about what you've been experiencing. This house is noisy. The sound of people walking around and loud banging in the walls are constant. It's hard for me to concentrate or, or, or get any sleep. But I also see strange things, like, like quick movements, like shadows right out of the corner of my eye, like, like something is trying to hide from my view. And I saw a man. He looked like he was, he was from another time. <laughs> that sounds crazy, doesn't it? No, no, it doesn't, Al. Just give us a chance to investigate, and I'm sure we can help you somehow. I hope so. That was a relief once I was able to tell them all of the things that happened. That's exactly what I needed. Somebody who wouldn't uh, ridicule, somebody who wouldn't think less of me. It was a burden off of my heart. We heard footsteps in the hallway. I suddenly felt a rushing at me, like an air pressure pushing me backwards. OK, that didn't take long. We have activity. I'm going to go check out the rest of the house. Cheryl is the sensitive on the team. I get pictures, and I also get feelings. I can sense what has been there or who has been there before in time. I saw a tall man. He had a hat on, and he was just standing there. Tina, there's something in here. You could feel your hair stand up on your arms. Yeah, there's definitely something here. <laughs> Tina, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. I was rushed by like a black mass. I actually could see it coming towards me, and I felt the wind is, I don't know if it went past me or through me. I think we've seen enough for one night. Based on Al's depression and the evidence the investigators collect, they come up with a theory about what's been plaguing his home. Al, we believe that there is at least one evil entity living in the house maybe several. They're called feeders. Feeders are like paranormal parasites, living off heightened human emotion. The entities were attracted to him like a magnet. I think they were almost like vampires. They were feeding on his misery and his um, hopelessness. Wait, let me show you something. I found these in a cabinet when I moved in. Someone who once lived here must have written them. The poems were very dark and talked about um, misery and despair and um, death. That is what the entities want 
and they needed. Haunted by the ghosts. And they brought this on to whoever lived in the house. World collapses. I am gone. It is very possible these feeders were here before you moved in, tormenting the author of these poems. I really think the best solution is to cleanse the house with prayer. I'm sorry, but I have no interest in that. I didn't really believe in the cleansing. I had asked God, uh, Jesus, everybody to take this away. It didn't work. Can you possibly move out, stay somewhere else? <sighs> Absolutely not. All my money is tied up in this place. There's no way. If you have to stay, you're going to have to learn to ignore the activity in your house. Don't give it energy. Don't feed it. We'll call and check on you, but promise you'll call us if you need us. The investigators really wanted me to make an effort to take ownership of the house. They wanted me to take power over it. But in the back of my mind, I didn't think anything was going to work. A dark entity called a feeder has taken over the home of Al Gonzalez. As I am turning, I see this large black mass right behind me, from floor to ceiling. It took up half the room. It starts moving very quickly down the hallway and turns into my bedroom. How do you sleep after you see something like that? I don't know. That was frightening. After much thought, Al reluctantly makes the decision to sell his house. I can't live with it anymore. I have to find a way out. He asks the paranormal experts who have been advising him for help. I was concerned for him because there was so much activity there. I know the place still needs a lot of work. I wish your hope it sells fast. It got to a point where the entities there were breaking him down. Tina was helping Al find a realtor and trying to sell his house. He just wanted out of that place. I want out, Tina. And I can't afford to rent a place while I, I, I wait for this place to sell. That was his home. I, Al had to make the decision to go. I mean, he definitely had me there poking him. But it was ultimately his decision. Try and stay optimistic. Let's just see what happens. OK. The house is on the market for several months, and there are no prospective buyers. I wanted to sell the house, get out from under it. <sighs> and couldn't sell it, couldn't sell it, couldn't sell it. And? Of course, we have all this warm, cozy paneling, lots of nice details. OK, I'll leave you two alone. Holler if you have any questions. Did you see 
the asking price for this place? It's a steal. Yeah, it's a bargain. But? I don't know. What is it? Let's get out of here. What's wrong? I mean, babe. Buyers would come and they would even be right to the point of where they were gonna buy the home and then they would back out all of a sudden. Stuck, Al lives in a state of constant fear. What are the shadows? What is happening to me? It wasn't normal. That's what kept me, I think, in my depression. I was not leading a normal life anymore. To remain sane, Al focuses all of his energy on home improvement while ignoring his friends and family. He quit communicating with a lot of people, including myself. You know, I didn't talk to him for a long time. Come on, I'll answer. Come on. When you live your life day after day expecting something that you can't explain to happen, you start losing a little bit of your sanity. And then things get worse, because they feed off of that. Whatever was in the house fed off of the anxiety, fed off of the fear. They liked it. Al Gonzalez is under attack by a supernatural entity called a feeder. I'm a grown man, and you like to think that you're strong and tough, but now I'm being physically hurt. It was personal. Why? Why? I knew then Why? that it was going to get worse. Why? And one day I'm going to find myself in a situation that I can't escape from. Al feels himself sliding deeper into depression. I started drinking a lot. 
smoking a lot, doing things that I didn't typically do before then. I almost didn't care about my life. The longer he stays in the house, the more he finds himself connecting with the previous tenant. I ended up relating to the writer of those poems. The anxiety, the fear, the desire to get out. Over the next few months, Al's hopelessness overtakes him. One night, Cheryl, the paranormal investigator and sensitive following his case, has a vision. I felt a sense of foreboding. He was sick, weak, and hopeless. It was almost like vultures. They were just standing there waiting for him. They wanted to torment him. Cheryl attempts to warn Al. I go to the front door, and it was just a single lady standing there, dressed like she was going out. Can I help you? This is where the party's at? Um, no. There's no party here. Sam said this is the place. Oh, sorry. There's no Sam here. I'm sure this is the right address. Look, I'm sorry. There's no party here tonight. There was no car in the drive. This is 30 seconds later, she's gone. No way for her to get out of my yard. I got three acres. She, she'd have to walk a minute and a half to get to the road. She's gone. Now I'm really mad because I'm being tormented. Get off my property! Nobody, no car, no cars going down the county road that I lived on. And now I'm just really freaked out.
For more a haunting, visit destinationamerica.com. Al Gonzalez is being targeted by paranormal entities called feeders, and their grip on him is tightening. I felt as if something was choking me. I felt as if I had somebody's hands around my neck. once again reaches out to the Parasisters for help. I had to find somebody to help me out. I couldn't do it on my own anymore. Al contacted us and told us that things really got worse. We were so very worried about him the whole house seemed really different. It was a lot colder. It was a lot darker. Something changed. Definitely something changed. Are you OK? I can't take much more of this. They're toying with you, Al. That's what feeders do. They live off your fear. They live off you. We know this has been hard on you, Al, but you're not in this alone. Al was in such terrible shape. He just wanted to close his eyes and maybe not wake up. And we could not let that happen to him. What just happened? Are you OK? I remember saying, did you just scratch your face? Yeah, scratches. <sighs> scratches. I said, no, I didn't touch my face. And I said, well, you have scratches. Let me see. They just appeared out of nowhere. That, that is it. Tina's right. You have to leave this house. You can't wait for it to sell until you can afford it. And Tina, she was afraid that she would come over one day and I would be dead. Right. It's time for me to do something. After suffering in the home for months, Al finally agrees to move out and rent a modest apartment in a nearby town until the house sells. I think that's it. Tina spots the manila envelope containing the dark poems from the previous tenant. You're not planning on keeping these, are you? No. Absolutely not. Let's get out of here. This place gives me the creeps. I hear that. Allie, you ready? Let's go. Starting over isn't a bad thing. A lot of people have to start over. I can turn the page and move on. Today, Al Gonzalez is a new man. Slowly but surely, it seems like he's reaching back out. He's starting to communicate more and more with family members. He is doing well. He has a job. He's supporting himself. As for the house, after years on the market, Al finally allows the paranormal group to cleanse it. In 2013, he sells it to a devout young couple. I found some peace in that. I thought if anybody can handle it, 
Maybe a good, strong, Christian, young couple could handle it. They're not going there in a state of depression with a lot of baggage like I did coming from my divorce. I know what happened to me, and I know that it was real. I know what I had to go through in order to find myself in a safe place now. I'm absolutely sure that there's something else out there beyond us.